In this video, we're going to talk about Embella Carousel. This is one of the best carousels that I have ever worked with, and it was actually brought to my attention by one of the community members uh, commenting on uh, the video that I made about Swiper uh, to also create carousels. Uh, I first heard about Embella Carousel uh, from Mehdi, who told me, check it out. It's better, and it is better. I like it a lot. It's uh, open source. It's framework agnostic in the sense that you can use it with React, you can use it with Svelte or native uh, plain JavaScript. It supports swipe and touch on mobile devices, and it also has animation and motion. So we're going to build something very simple and talk about different APIs and plugins that you can use with Embella Carousel in this video. I've started from a brand new Next.js application by cloning down this Next.js uh, template that we created in a couple of videos back. It was about how I set up my Next.js application using TypeScript, Tailwind, CSS, and some plugins that would help us sort Tailwind classes nicely. So you can also use this template, clone it down, and start with me if you're building with me. And let's go to Embella Carousel and get started guides to see what we should do. As I mentioned, it supports uh, different, it's library or framework agnostic, so you could use it with pretty much anything that you want. We're going to go to React and follow step by step to uh, install Embella Carousel. So let's install this Embella Carousel React. So I'm going to copy this, coming back to our project. Let's just stop the dev server here and pmpm PM add. I'm using PMPM, you can use NPM, Yarn, or PMPM. Whatever your choice of package manager is, doesn't really matter. So the first step was to install. Second step is the component structure. If you can see here, maybe make this a bit bigger. So we have this wrapper, which is having a class of Embla, and then we're going to have a container, and then the slides inside of it. So let's actually copy this and come back to our page over here. Let's just delete everything and bring this. While well, we're using hooks, so let's turn this into a client component. So we're getting this use Embla carousel hook from the package we just installed. This is going to give us a ref that we can pass into this container or to the wrapper. And uh, then we have this container and the slides inside of it. We then need to style our carousels. We could use this CSS that's provided here. So we can go to our global CSS and literally paste this in here. This is going to set an overflow hidden of the wrapper, a flex container on the container, which is going to just lay the images one um, beside the other. And then we're going to have a flex of 00100%. This is the basis, uh, the width of each of these slides, and then a mean width of zero. Okay, so let's come back here and go to our application. Let's refresh. Well, we need to have export default because this is what Next.js expects from each page. Okay, this slide is here, but we can barely see this. So let me make this a bit bigger or actually give this some style. So let's add a border. Let's give this a maxed width of maybe large, a margin top of 12 and MX auto. Let's see if it gets better, sure. And let's also give this a little height of maybe 56. Maybe we add a flex container to all of these slides to also center the text. So justify center. And let's give this a height of full and this should, okay. So we have our slide here and I can just swipe to the next one. I'm using the mouse right here. And just like that, we have our carousel. So very easy, just one hook we pass in a ref, we have a container, that's a flex box, and our slides, and this guy has an overflow of hidden. We can translate all of this back into Tailwind CSS if, if you want to, but I'm just going to keep it like this as we're adding in more components. We just keep these classes and add the styles necessary to style this, but you can just uh, turn this into whatever uh, CSS that you're using. Okay, so we styled the carousel. Now, to access the Carousel API, this is where the fun starts. Well, this hook takes the Carousel options as the first argument, and additionally, you can access the API with the use effect as demonstrated below. So this hook, first of all, you can pass in some options to it. For example, here, we say loop false. That's the default. You can pass in a loop true. So let's just try this out. I'm going to pass in a loop 
of true. And now if I go back to the application, when we slide to the end, we could just slide back to the first one in the same way, so it, it has a loop. And then the other thing is that uh, other than this ref, it gives back to us, it also gives back the API. So you can use this API, for example, here, if you're getting the slide notes and then you can do whatever you want, this is inside of a use effect. But we can use this to maybe implement a go to next or previous buttons where we use this API to programmatically slide over to the next slide or go back to the previous slide. But before we implement that, uh, we want to talk about plugins because you can add plugins to the, your carousel and expand it. Uh, there are different built-in or official plugins that come with Embella Carousel. For example, this auto plugin or auto play plugin, you can install it and you can just pass it by passing this inside of an array to the use Embella Carousel hook. And this allows you to implement the auto play functionality. So let me just bring this in now that we talked about it. This is another section that we're going to get into a little later in the docs, but now that we're here, Let's just pause this and pmpm PM add autoplay. Let's restart the dev server. And now we're going to bring this autoplay inside of our code. And then we're just going to pass this autoplay, or we're going to call this class or function inside of an array when using this hook. Now, if I go back to our site and refresh, it will start auto-playing the slides, as you can see here, after every four seconds, I believe, but you can control that by passing in a delay parameter or option here. Let's setting it to 2000 milliseconds, which is going to be uh, auto-played every two seconds. As you can see, the slides are moving faster now. So these are plugins. There are different plugins you can add to your carousel. We're going to review them in a second together. But before I do that, let's go back to the documentation. Let's make this a bit smaller. So here we reviewed how to add this package to React. You can also go to the guides. There are different guides here talking about the slide container, the sizes, how you can define different breakpoints and define the gaps between your slides so you could read through them. But what I'm interested in is, is to implement this previous and next button so we can see how uh, we can use the API as well under the hood to implement this um, buttons to programmatically navigate to different slides. So this guide will show you how to add previous and next buttons using the API. We're going to make use of two functions on the API, scroll prev or prev, to go to the previous slide and scroll next function that takes us to the next slide. Now for placing the buttons inside of our wrapper or container here, one thing to note is that your carousel, assuming that it is draggable, it responds to pointer events. To make this a bit better, we're going to wrap this with yet another component or div, which we're going to call viewport. So this is what we had before. We're going to just add this Ampella viewport to it, uh, which is going to separate this viewport or where the slides are actually showing. Uh, to the buttons that we're going to implement uh, at the bottom because you're going to listen to this touch events on dragging these slides, but you also want to have these buttons working. So this is the recommended way that we would work on this. So let's go ahead and add this to our component. So what I'm going to do is to rename this to be now viewport. And then I'm going to wrap everything here with a div of class Embla. Okay, and then back inside of our global CSS. Now this guy is the viewport that needs to have a hidden overflow. So let's save this up, coming back here. Now inside of here, we have the viewport, which is where we're going to render our slides. And then down here, we can have the actions section where we can add these two buttons. Okay, so I'm going to add these two buttons over here. And if you scroll down, it talks about how you would go about adding this or using the API using vanilla JavaScript. If you're interested in React, so we scroll down to this React section where we have these two buttons, but on top of the class names, we also have this onClick methods, which are defined here. Let me just again make this a bit bigger. 
So we are getting the API back. We are defining two functions. One is scroll prev, which is going to call this scroll prev function on the API under the hood. Everything is wrapped inside of a use callback to not recalculate these functions every time that we re-render. Uh, it's just an optimization technique here. So let's actually bring in these two. I'm going to replace these two with the new components. And let's go ahead and define these two functions as well. So we're going to copy this here. Now we need use callback from React. So let's import that. And we also need to get this Embla API. Okay, so with that out of the way, we are now go ready to go back to our application. And as you can see, let me just turn the autoplay off and save this. We don't have any plugins. So it starts from the first slide. And if I click on the next, it goes to the second. It loops through all of them. And if I click on the previous button, it just loops back, which is pretty easy. So this was an example of us using this API and all the functions that are exposed on this API to be able to extend the functionality of our slides. Now going back to this, let me just make this a bit smaller. So makes more sense. So this was in the guides section. In the API section, you can review all the APIs, all the options, the methods, and the events that you have on the Carousel instance. So you can review that on your own. Uh, next, I want to talk about plugins. So as I mentioned, there are some official plugins that you can add to your Carousel. We touched on autoplay. There is another one which is called auto scroll. This is going to automatically just to scroll the slides. If you see here, if I click the play, it's just scrolling it all through with a very nice animation. You can set the loop to true and then it just goes on and on. There's different options you can pass by it from speed, the start delay, the direction that it goes and whatnot. You could review that. Auto height is just to adjust to different heights of slides that you're passing by, whether they're different images or different divs. You can have different heights. The class names is to set different class names depending on what slide is in your viewport. For example, here, you're changing the contrast or the opacity or making it pop out when the slide is in view and then it fades out when it is not in view. So this is something you can also do. There are also other great examples that you can look at. So in this example section, you have this overview of predefined um, codes or components or carousels that you can take a look at the code and implement. We're going to look at them in a second. But there's also this generator function or functionality where you would define what your carousel, what you want your carousel, carousel to do, what language you're writing it in. For example, I, I pick React, whether it's horizontal or vertical. This is another thing I didn't mention. You can change whether the slides are going horizontally or vertically. So left to right, right to left, and whatnot so you would select all of these and then it would generate that um, sandbox or that code for you depending on the options that you created this is such a great option it is still in beta uh, use it with cautious but it's still nice to have this now in the predefined sections of your examples you have basic examples that come with buttons nicely designed and with this uh, dots that change or jump into a specific slide you have the loop. We have already implemented this, so it just loops around. You have a drag free example here. So if you drag it, it just keeps going instead of just snapping to that scroll position. Different types of alignments, variable widths for your slides, as you can see here. The y axis is just sliding vertically instead of horizontally. How many slides you want to have per view? Uh, if you want to have thumbnails, so the code is, if you go edit the code, it opens up a sandbox and you can see the code there, which is amazing. And there's also some examples for plugins. For example, the autoplay, we looked at it together, the auto scroll, the auto height, different class names. Again, you have access to the code and you can just copy paste or get inspired by the code here. One thing that I like, or two things that I like really here, it's this parallax effect where you can see the, the motion or the effect is like a parallax. It, the, the image and the slide move at different speeds. So it creates this amazing effect. And also this one that just puts the images that are not in the viewport into a lower opacity. So it, the main image pops out. This one 
I also like a lot. And there's this uh, scale one, which the image scales up and then fades or um, scales down when it goes out of the viewport. The opacity, again, something similar to that one that we saw up here. We have this one that has a progress. Again, this is using the API to get the progress of the slide bars to create this uh, slide slider progress down here. And lazy loading. I have also had somebody ask me, I think about the Swiper JS, where, how would you go about implementing um, lazy loading or when these images are maybe asynchronously fetched and you want to show a loading spinner and then change to that image. So you can look through these examples. They're great to implement or use this inside of any project that you have. And that about wraps this video. It's an amazing library. It's open source. It also adapts to every framework that you're using. It's mobile friendly, so it supports the touch and swipe. And it does come with a lot of examples that you can just get inspired by or just copy paste into your code and use it right away. If you have any questions, like always, uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.